Hey guys and welcome to another episode. Today in this video I'm going to show you how to properly inspect and lubricate your brakes. So you're going to want to do this pretty much every six months. I like doing this before winter and before summer. The reason why I like doing that is because I don't really want to work in the middle of winter or maybe in the dead of the heat in the summer to get this done. So I find this really good timing right now to get this done. Take a look at the brakes, take it all apart, take a look at what needs to be serviced, if anything needs to be serviced, and then go from there. But I'm gonna jump right into this video, guys. So I have the car jacked up in the air and I'm gonna be throwing jack stands underneath it. I'm gonna take the wheel off and then we're gonna catch up. After you remove each one of your lug nuts, you should be able to remove the wheel. After that, you're gonna see that you have your brakes exposed and now we can get started with taking care of them and lubing them up. So the first thing that we're going to do is turn the wheels in the direction of whatever side we're working on. So on the driver's side, if we're going to start off over here, we're going to turn the wheels to the left. And that's going to give us more access to the braking components. So servicing them and inspecting them is going to be a lot easier. We're going to take a look at many components such as the slider pins, the bleeder screw, the brake rotor itself, the brake pads, the brake shims, and also the material that's found on both the pads and the rotor itself. We're going to take a look at all that, inspect it, and if it needs to be replaced, we're going to replace it. With the steering wheel turned to the left, we're going to have access to the bolts that are found on the top and bottom. So we're going to take these out and these are threading into the slider pins. We need to remove them so that we can move the brake caliper out of the way. Now it's very important when you have the brake caliper disconnected that you don't let it hang. So you can use either a bungee cable, you can use a hook that's designed for these calipers, or any way that you can get by by not having the weight of the caliper on the brake line. With the brake caliper removed from the carrier, we can now remove the brake pads from the carrier itself. There's going to be one on the inside and one on the outside. These right here are the brake pads that we just removed from the caliper. Now I'm going to take a look at the brake thickness. So we're going to see how much lining we still have and how much material is still left on this pad. So with this indicator right here, I can see how much is in the red zone, how much is in the yellow, and how much is in the green. So at a shop, if you're ever going to get an inspection, they're going to take a look at how much brake material you have left and they're going to go off of this gauge. So if it's in the green, that means you still have lots of life left. If it gets to be in the yellow, that means that you're going to need to replace the pads sometime soon. And if it's in the red, that means definitely replace. Now when you get into the red, you should actually get right up onto the brake squealer, which is going to be an indicator that you really need to change those pads. So taking a look at the outside pad first, we're going to see how much material we have left. So you can see it's definitely not in the red. It's not in the yellow, so that means we still have lots of light left. So I'm going to put all those aside, and we're going to see if it is 8 millimeters left of material, if we have 10 millimeters left, or if we have 12. I'm going to show you, for instance, first a brand new pad to show you how much material is going to be on here. So you can see that it's a little bit more than 10 and a little bit less than 12. So it's about 11 millimeters of pad. That's how much material we have to work with. So for this one right here, it is just a smudge. Actually, it's right on 10. So we have 10 millimeters left of material on this pad. That's on the outside. And if we look at the inside part of the pad, it's actually closer to 8 than it is to 10. That difference right there tells us that the inside pad is wearing faster than the outside. So what does that mean? That means that the slider pins are not lubricating properly and they're starting to stick a little bit. So we're going to take both slider pins out, clean them up, re-lubricate them so that we can have even wear. This right here is not enough of a difference to replace the pads as there's still a lot of material left for both of them. So the slider pins are located both at the top and bottom of the brake caliper bracket. So they should be moving freely in and out. So we're going to remove these and make sure that they get properly lubricated because their lubrication makes a huge difference on how these brakes will perform. To remove it, all that you do is pull the little slider pin out and it should be removed completely. Sometimes the rubber boot will also come out, but it's easy to put back on should that happen. Do the same thing for the bottom slider pin and then you'll have both of them removed from the bracket. Now before we go ahead onto the cart and actually clean these things up, I'm first going to disconnect everything else that's down here. So we're going to be removing the brake pad shims that are found on the top and bottom. Those get sandwiched between the brake pads and that's where you put your anti-seize on. Once you have those disconnected, we're going to remove the brake caliper bracket. We're going to remove it completely. This is an optional step. You don't need to do this, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be removing the bolt up top here along with the one on the bottom. 
When working in tight places like this, I like using a ratcheting wrench to remove any kind of nut or bolt. And I'm doing exactly that to remove these bolts both on the bottom and top. Once you have the bracket removed, the brake rotor, if it isn't seized onto the hub, should slide right off. With the brake rotor removed, we have to see if the rotor thickness has worn down so much to the point that this is not within spec. So the way the brakes work is you have the pad on one side and you have another pad on the other side and they're being squeezed and pushed together onto the brake rotor. So over time, because you have material wearing down, you have both the pad that's gonna be breaking down and becoming thinner and you also have the same thing with the rotor. But since the rotor is a little bit stronger, it's a steel versus a regular pad that's made out of a composite of many materials, the rotor thickness isn't going to decrease as much as the pad, but it still does decrease. Typically on the side of the rotor, you're gonna see a marking that's gonna indicate how thick the minimum thickness for the rotor is. You sometimes might have it on the rotor hat and you also sometimes might not have it at all. For this instance, this rotor does not have any markings at all, but I wanna show you with this rotor right here. So this rotor is from a Nissan 350Z and the rotor thickness is indicated right here. So the rotor right here states on the side that the minimum thickness is 28.4 millimeters. Now I just went ahead and measured this and this right now, currently brand new, is 30.2. So when it wears down almost two millimeters in thickness, that's when you would have to replace the brake rotor. Now you wouldn't necessarily think that that is a huge difference, but that material does make a difference. Realistically, you shouldn't really even need to measure it, but what you're trying to look for is a size difference between the inside and outside. If both of the materials are pretty much the same, the rotor's still pretty good. But when it gets super worn down or if one side wears more than the other, you're really gonna be able to notice that difference. And I'll show you what happens as a result if the brakes and slider pins are not lubricated properly. So I just did the brakes on my dad's truck and he uses it for work. So he does a lot of distance and he does a lot of driving. I changed out the front and the rear brakes and he said to me that there's a noise, there was a squeal that he was getting. And the reason why that is is because the slider pins were not lubricated correctly. So when he brought it to a shop, they didn't use the correct lube or whatever happened. But what you see here is the result of what happened. So you can see that we still have that little line right there and that's the indicator that we need to change the pads. So these pads definitely did get used all the way down to where it's supposed to be. So this one is actually not too bad, but this one you can see right here has worn completely down and because of the uneven pad wear, it ground itself down all the way through the lining of the brake onto the metal backing. And you can see that right there, that is a pretty bad disaster. So he still kind of had brakes. They weren't good by any means. They were making a lot of noise and it's pretty clear why. But the craziest thing is what happens to the brake rotor. This is the rear brake on a 2500 HD GM. This is a vented large disc brake. So I replaced the brakes and I replaced the pads. But because of the uneven brake wear, you can see what it did to the rotor. So you can see that this side isn't too bad, but I'm gonna try and pick this up and spin it so you guys can see this, ready? Look at how bad that was worn. It wore down so much of this material that it ground down so much of the rotor that the outside piece right here is now completely gone. So you can see the inside parts of the veins and this is definitely time to change the brakes. Since this would be facing the inside part of the vehicle, this part right here is closest to the piston. So that means that the slider pins did not slide properly. You can see because it completely ground down the rotor along with the brake pad. So by using the correct fluid and the correct lubrication, you're gonna be able to prevent this from happening. Next up comes cleaning the hardware. So I'm gonna be cleaning up the slider pins, removing all the silicone paste that was on there and all the dirty stuff that's currently on there right now. So we wanna make these look as nice and as new as possible so that when we put new silicone paste and new anti-seize on both the slider pins and the brake caliper shims, everything should work nice and smooth. If you can't get it all off with a regular rag, if you use a little bit of brake clean with a rag, it's gonna make it come off a lot easier. But when you're done, it should look something like this. With the hardware now cleaned up, we can move this to the side and we can put all the stuff back on the bracket. So the brake caliper bracket right here entails of this piece and these two little pieces of rubber that cover up the slider pin holes. If you're gonna be putting a different kind of silicone paste inside the slider pin area, it's not a half bad idea to take these off, clean these out, even spray a little bit of brake clean in there to get it so that there's nothing in there. 
so we're not gonna be mixing any kind of silicone paste. Now if you have to, grab a Q-tip to clean all this stuff out because there should be a little bit of fluid that's found in there, like that. I'm gonna fast forward because I'm gonna be cleaning all this stuff out using brake clean, shooting it in there, cleaning it out, and then I'll get back into this. So when it's fully cleaned out and there's no more kind of silicone paste in there, we're gonna throw this back on the caliper. You just grab it and it literally slides right over top. So the next up comes the slider pins and lubricating them so that they're gonna be able to move freely in and out. Now I've switched from the 3M stuff to this, and this is a Permatex high temperature silicone paste. I've used this for regular cars, I've used it for more high performance stuff, and it works like a charm for both. And the coolest part about this is this bright orange. It's pretty sweet. So what I'm gonna do is use this, put the silicone paste all in there, and you kinda wanna go a little bit overboard, especially if you went ahead and cleaned out the inside part of the brake carrier, because what's gonna happen is that if we put this in with just a tiny bit of silicone paste on there, it's not gonna be able to move freely in and out, because there's nothing in there. So we wanna be able to coat the entire inside, coat the inside part of the rubber boot, and also have enough on there so that the slider pin will wanna move in and out nicely. So we're gonna have it like that. If you have any excess, just you know wipe it off. And you really wanna work it in. So I can still kind of feel it grinding. So I'm gonna take that out, put a little bit more, and just repeat this procedure to both of these so that we can put both slider pins into the bracket. So what we're gonna do for these is pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. So we're gonna push them back into place, how they were. So we're gonna push them like that, push them straight down, make sure they're in there snug. Same thing for the bottom, same thing for the top. Just like that. And then we're gonna put a copper anti-seize on here. So what that's going to do is it's gonna allow the brake pad to slide in and out. So down here, you're just gonna put a little bit, you don't need too much, a little bit on there, a little bit where the pad actually slides. You wanna do the same thing for both sides. So if we can get the brake pad to slide freely in and out, it's not going to want to hold one side more than another, and we're gonna be able to get even brake wear. If you guys are clean with this, and you take your time, and you do a good job, it is going to last a really long time. And that's the beauty about doing all this work yourself. If you don't know what you're doing, this is where you educate yourself. But if you do know what you're doing and you have the time, it's better to do it all yourself because you're not gonna be A, paying some guy to do this for you, but you can also take your time to make sure it's done right. With the brake caliper carrier ready to be mounted back on, it's not a half bad idea now before you go ahead and mount the rotor and the carrier on to go around the entire hub with a wire brush to remove any corrosion or any rust that's on there. Once you have it clean, apply a little bit of your copper anti-seize on the face of it to prevent the brake rotor from seizing to the hub. Once you have that done, we can grab our brake rotor, slide it right over top of the hub, slide the brake caliper bracket over top of the rotor, and then install those two bolts that hold it in place. Don't forget to tighten both of those bolts up to the back of the knuckle and then the carrier is going to be mounted. You can then grab your brake pads and apply a little bit of anti-seize on the ends of them. You're then going to want to install them in the same orientation as to where they were. So make sure the inside pad goes back where it was and the same thing goes for the outside pad. If your pads or rotor were very worn down and you replace them, when reinstalling the caliper, you're going to have to retract the piston and push it back into the caliper so it will all fit. To get that done, I'm going to be using this caliper spreader and it makes life super easy. Ratchet until it doesn't want to ratchet anymore, flick the switch, back it off, and then you'll see that it's retracted back into the caliper. With that complete, we can slide it up and over our pads we can align the slider pins onto the holes right there. And once you have it in place, we're gonna install those two bolts that we removed, one found on the top that goes through the slider pin, and there's gonna be another one on the bottom. So it's pretty straightforward from here. We're pretty much done. Don't forget to tighten them up. And then our caliper and everything is assembled. Now, last but not least, it's a good idea to bleed your brake system. Now, you don't have to at this point because we didn't introduce any air. However, it's not a half bad idea to break the bleeder screw loose so that it's actually gonna work itself in and it's not going to rust to the caliper. Since this is made out of steel and since the caliper is made out of steel, 
What could happen is that they could rust, they could fuse together, and then say down the road when you need to actually bleed the entire brake system, you won't be able to. So instead of taking that two seconds to just break this loose, you're gonna have to spend that $100 or so and purchase a whole new caliper and replace that. I'm not going to go into it in this video for the brake bleeding procedure. However, if you just wanna crack this loose, you don't need to open this up completely, you just wanna crack it and then tighten it back up. Air open, and then close. Now you said that there was no air or no fluid or whatever that came out of this system. So that means that we were able just enough to turn it a tiny bit to break it free, and then that's it. So at this point, our brakes are now complete. That wasn't too bad if you ask me. Now what you have to do next is repeat this exact same procedure to all three other corners of the car so that the brakes are properly lubricated. Now my advice to you guys is that if you're going to be replacing either your pads or your rotors, do them in a set. So if you're going to replace the pads, do the fronts at the same time or do the rears at the same time. You can do all four if you like, but it's not a good idea to just do one corner. So if you need to replace a pad, a rotor or whatever, usually the other parts are going to be not too far behind it. Before I go ahead and wrap up this video, I wanna let you guys know and show you how simple it is to just measure everything once you have it like this. So if you just wanna inspect your brakes, you can do it all just like this. So you can go ahead and measure the thickness of the brake rotor by just measuring it up at the top. And if you wanna inspect your pads, you can do everything through that little hole right there. There's a reason why that hole is there. So if you just come in here, you can take a look at the outside part of the pad, you can see the rotor thickness, and you can also see the inside pad. You can measure everything, you can put your little indicator to measure how much material you have in there, and then you can be on your ways. The only reason why you'd wanna disconnect everything is if you want to re-lubricate the pads, the piston, the slider pins, and everything else. At this point, the only thing that still needs to be done is we need to grab the wheel, throw it back on the car, torque up the lug nuts, and then put the car down on the ground. Now this job is not that difficult. If you guys take a little bit of time, even just to watch this video maybe once or twice, if you're not confident with doing this kind of stuff, by looking it over a couple times, you should have the confidence to try this and attempt it at home. Now of course, having the proper tools makes a really big difference. That's why all these tools that I've used, I'm gonna be linking in the description box to make it super easy for you guys. You can get this job done with basic hand tools, but some of the extra stuff like even the brake caliper spreader, some of the silicone paste and the anti-seize makes life a lot easier. So check out the description box down below. I have links directing you directly to Amazon. So if you buy something on there, it'll get shipped directly to your door. So if you guys have any questions regarding the video, throw them down in the comment section below and I'd be more than happy to help. Again guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.